Hello and uh, welcome back. My name is Ned. I am a technical evangelist here at Caspio and in this video lecture I will be teaching you how to create views and authentications or login screens for each of our user roles. In part one I gave you a demo of the application. In part two I taught you how to create the tables and relationships between the tables. So if you haven't seen part one and part two I definitely recommend watching those videos first prior to watching part three. So let's begin. The next step in the process is to go down to views and we're going to use the views to filter out active managers and also active employees. This is how in Caspio we're going to give access or privileges to each of these user roles. So let's set up our first view and very simply just give your view a name. I'm going to go ahead and call this SR Active Approving Managers. And I'm trying to filter out the active approving managers from the employee table. So let's move that table to the right. Hit next. And when you get to this screen, you're going to use the criteria tab. And on this screen, you'll notice we have a drag and drop interface to move these objects into the canvas screen. So just simply by snapping these objects in place, you can create and or or logical operators to filter out data from that employee table. Now, if you want to start from the beginning, you can click on the reset link or simply just hover over the trash can and let go. This is the original anchor. You can never move this. One always has to be in place. So now, how do I configure this to just filter out active approving managers? So let's move over to field object. And let's grab the field role and have that field equal to Manager. So if you remember my data inside the employee table, I used MGR to identify my managers and I'm using rep to identify my reps. So in this case, I want to filter out the managers, but since I'm looking for active managers, I need another field object. And then I need that field called active to be checked. So if both of these conditions are true, if role equals to manager and if the active field is checked, once I click finish, this view is now going to filter out just Jane. Because what we're telling the view is, based on those configurations, is to just simply filter out active managers. Because once I have this view created, later on we're going to build a login screen on top of this view to only give Jane access to certain reports. Let's set up our second view that's going to filter out all of the active employees. So I'm going to call this SR Active Employees from the same table. And once again, we're going to use the Criteria tab. And this time, I'm only going to move over one field object. And the only thing that we care about here is that the active field is checked. Because this view, I want to filter out all of my active employees. So it's going to include the managers, and it's also going to include the reps, because we don't care if they're a manager or if they're an employee in this case, or a rep. So let's hit finish. And now when I open up this view, you're going to see both Jane and Ken. These are my two employees in the table. So the only thing that we are caring about is that they're an active employee. Now the next step is to go down to the authentications object. And don't be confused by this term authentications. What this really means is a login interface. So when you see that email and password combination on the website with the login button, that's really all that you're going to be creating under this object. So let's build our very first login screen. And let's begin with our customers because in our application, we want the customers to be able to log in as well. So we're going to select a table that contains our customer information. That's going to be my data source because this table contains the email and the password of each of our customers. Now for the setup options, you can use the express radio button if you need a quick setup for your login screen, email and password. I do recommend that you use custom. Why? Because you get a lot more customization options. When you get to validation, what this basically means is how do you want to validate this person that's logging into the application? And Caspio gives you four different options here. If you select the first radio button, you're basically using the recommended data source, which is this selection that we have selected here in the dropdown. So it's going to use the information from this table 
to allow this customer to log into the application. If you select the second radio button, which is ID services, now you're telling the customer that they can log in using a social media account. So if this customer has a Twitter account or a Gmail account, once you configure these fields here, you're going to allow the customer to log in using those credentials. If you select the third radio button, now this is using a combination of both of these radio buttons. So the customer can also log in using the information from the customer table, their email and password, but they can also log in using social media. And this is very common nowadays on many of the applications that you see on the website. If you want to be able to log in quickly without having to register, you can use your social media account to log into an app. And the final radio button, which I don't have available in my plan on this account, is using single sign-on. This feature is only available on the uh, corporate level plans, so if you're building an internal application and your employees already have their network credentials, uh, you can use those same credentials simultaneously to log in not just to your network, but also to a Caspio application at the same time. So it's very handy and helpful if uh, you don't want to use two sets of credentials to log in to two different places. In our demo today, in our lecture, we're going to use the very first radio button. So we're going to be looking at the information from this table. And down below, you can see both of your login fields, email and password. Now, my label for email says username. I always like to rename the label so it says email because it's a little bit more clear that the people are supposed to use their email to log into the application. Another benefit of using custom versus express, if you wish to have an additional login field, so for additional layer of security, you can use the plus icon and use another authentication field, for example, first name. Let's see what happens. Let's move that to the top. And now before the customer can log in, they have to input their first name, email, and password. It's a bit of an overkill in our example. We just want to stick with two fields. I'm just going to go ahead and remove the first name, but I wanted to show you how by using the plus icon, you can insert additional login fields to your login screen. And again, that is the benefit of using custom versus express. So let's remove that first name field and just stick with email and password. And when you're done, all you really have to do here at the bottom is click on create. And let's give this a name. I'm going to call this SR customer login. Now that we have our customer login created, let's create two additional login screens one for the approving managers and one for the service reps. So now, instead of looking inside my employee info table, we have these two views that we just created a couple of minutes ago. So here's the view that's filtering just approving managers. I'm going to select that as my data source. I'm going to use custom. Once again, I'll use recommended, and here are my two login fields, email and password. And again, I'm just going to rename the label so it says email, and hit create. I'm going to call this SR Approving Manager Login. Now what I want you to understand from this is because I built this login screen on top of that view that's just filtering Jane, this login screen is only going to give access to Jane to see certain reports later on when we build all of our data pages. And now for the very last authentication that I want to create is for the service reps. And for the service reps, all we need to do is select a view that's filtering all of the employees that are active. Once again, I'll use custom, recommended. I'm going to change my label to email and very simply just click on create. And we're going to call this SR service rep login. And that's all you have to do. So in this video, all we did was create two views, one that's filtering all of the active approving managers the second one that's filtering all of the active employees. Once you have those two views created, the last step is to create the authentications, one that's going to give access to Jane, who is the approving manager, our customers, and also our service reps. Personally, this is what I call a foundation in Caspio. Once you have all of your tables created, relationships, views, and login screens, this is the foundation that you need to now start building all of your forms and reports, and that is the fun part. So I hope to see you in part four, which is the next lecture. And in part four, I will be teaching you how to build all the forms, all of the reports that you will eventually deploy to your website. Thanks for watching part three, and I hope to see you in the next lecture.